Colleagues, I call the meeting of the General Committee on Political Affairs and Security to order. You have at your desks a copy of the agenda. It has been distributed to each member. Could I please invite you to adopt the agenda? Are there objections to the agenda? Objections to the agenda? Without objection, the agenda is adopted. After this morning's meeting, we have two more meetings this afternoon and tomorrow. At this morning's meeting, we will complete the consideration of the amendments to the draft resolution and, if time permits, move on to the supplementary items. Thank you all for your cooperation. Uh, we shall now proceed to continuation of consideration of the amendments to the draft resolution. In light of the number of amendments, I shall continue to impose strict limits on speaking time. Uh, and, and so uh, let us agree that uh, proposers of amendments will be allowed to speak for one minute with the same amount of time reserved to the opponent of the amendment. Is that procedure agreeable? It is agreed one minute for each speaker then. I shall then ask the sponsor of the draft resolution, uh, Ms. Setterfeld, our distinguished rapporteur, for her opinion following that. I shall put the amendment to the vote. As a clarification from yesterday, if a valid amendment has no one to speak on it, there will still be an opportunity to speak against the amendment and to vote on it. There's no requirement in our rules of procedure for an amendment to be moved formally for consideration. I now call on Mr. Varamenos of Greece to propose amendment number seven, our distinguished colleague from Greece. Yeah, they are not here. It's going to be Cyprus presenting it. Uh, and we are told that in the absence of Mr. Varamenos, uh, our colleague from Cyprus will present the amendment. Point of procedure, Mr. President. Due to the dramatic uh, developments and the urgent situation created regarding the referendum in Greece, we have been uh, uh, informed that the Greek delegation sent a letter to President Canerva informing him of their non-participation in this session. I think that, and according to the rules, in such cases, the proposed amendments remain valid. So the members of the committee, we have to consider the Greek amendment as self-explanatory and vote according to their judgment once they have heard the view of the rapporteur. The, the gentleman is quite correct. The, um, the amendment is proposed and is valid and does not require the author to speak in favor. Does anyone wish to speak against the amendment? Anyone at all wish to speak against amendment number seven? In the absence of uh, anyone speaking in behalf, what is Mrs. Setterfeld's opinion of the amendment? Thanks, Mr. Chair. I agree. The um, rapporteur agrees to the amendment, so I shall now put amendment seven to the vote. Are you ready to vote? All in favor of amendment seven, please raise your voting card. The, the vote is, uh, is um, indisputed. Uh, those opposed, those opposed, raise your voting card. And uh, abstentions. One abstention, and the amendment is adopted. Um, amendment eight has become invalid because insufficient signatories are in attendance at the session. We will now move to amendment number nine. Um, and the chair calls on Mr. Kafkalias of Cyprus to propose Amendment number nine. Thank you, Mr. President. We will, we will wish that the mention be made already in the preamble of the resolution 
in connection with paragraph 21 and the supplementary uh, item proposed by our Swiss colleague, Mr. Klasman, Mrs. Klasman, of the high the relevance of the code of conduct in the context of uh, Helsinki Plus 40 towards a security community. We also deem important to point out that the fundamental principles of international law and human rights, law, of human rights law enshrined by the code pertain to both interstate and internal political military conduct norms. This make the code a unique norm setting document as stated at the Basel Ministerial Council with a valuable contribution to efforts in the field of arms control and towards fostering greater, greater trust and transparency within and beyond the OSCE area. It is therefore necessary that the code be modernized and that its implementation mechanisms is, uh, be uh, enhanced. Thank you. Uh, does anyone wish to speak against amendment number nine? Anyone at all to speak against amendment number nine? Madam Rapporteur, what do you say to amendment number nine? Mr. Chair, I agree. The Rapporteur agrees. We are now ready to vote. Will those in favor of amendment number nine please raise their voting cards? It is clear, those opposed? Are there those opposed? And they are uh, one, one opposed and abstentions. And no abstentions and the amendment is adopted. Um, now as to amendment number 10, in the absence of the, the proposer to this amendment, would any of the other signatories like to propose amendment Number 10, that would be Mr. Guminski of Belarus, Mr. Senko of Belarus, Ms. Leonenko of Belarus, or Mr. Geg Hymian of Armenia. Do either one of those delegates? Armenia. Yes. Um, Mr. Geg Hymian of Armenia is recognized to propose amendment number 10. You're well, you are recognized, sir. Я думаю, эта поправка исходит из всех тех тревог, с которыми поделились делегации буквально всех стран в ходе сегодняшней нашей дискуссии. Мы предлагаем принять эту поправку. And who wishes to speak against amendment number 10? Are there those who wish to speak against amendment number 10? And the chair rec recognizes the delegate from Ukraine. Ukraine. You know, the printing on these cards is, uh, is not as big as it would seem. Uh, so the, the, uh, the delegate from Ukraine is recognized. Speak against amendment number 10. Uh, yeah, uh, dear colleagues, we propose uh, uh, to remain uh, the previous um, uh, provision of uh, this uh, um, resolution, draft resolution, uh, because uh, when we are talking about arms trade treaty, uh, it's established the collective reforms to bring the responsibility, accountability, and transparency to global arms trade. Uh, so, in our opinion, uh, we should uh, stay on this point in this, uh, 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 in this resolution. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, what is the opinion of Mrs. Satterfeld? Thanks, Mr. Thanks, Mr. Chair. My opinion is that uh, uh, the, um, uh, the res... Uh, number six should stay. Uh, I think it's it's very important that uh, also Russia uh, speak to the treaty on conventional armed force, as it's a very important treaty these days. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Rapporteur. So, uh, are we ready to vote on Amendment Number Ten? Are you ready to vote? All in favor of amendment number 10, raise your voting card. One, two, 
cards down and those opposed to the amendment raise your voting card abstentions abstentions yes thank you thank you five six seven abstentions and the amendment is defeated with regard to Amendment 11, this amendment has become invalid as insufficient signatories are in attendance at the session. And so we move to Amendment 12. And I call upon Mrs. Vilia Alignite from Lithuania to propose Amendment Number 12. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in fact, uh, I have made two proposals uh, with the Amendment 12. Uh, one of them is, uh, uh, I ask you to rephrase a little bit, expressing grave concern about the tragic developments and loss of life in Ukraine. And uh, second thing is that, firstly, in our resolution, we should speak about the reasons of the conflict and after about OECE engagement in resolution of this conflict. So my suggestion is to insert this paragraph number eight after paragraph 11. If it's clear, I would kindly ask Mrs. Rapporteur to say something about her opinion. <laughs> well, uh, and, yeah. and uh, she will be given an opportunity. Let's first, though, ask for anyone that would like to speak in opposition to Amendment Number 12. There being no one, Madam Rapporteur, what do you say then to Amendment Number 12? Thanks, Mr. Chair. I agree with Amendment Number 12. Thanks. All right. Are we ready to vote? Those in favor of Amendment Number 12, please raise your voting cards. All right, and uh, cards down. Those opposed, anyone opposed? Are there abstentions? And the amendment is adopted. Now, with regard to Amendment 13, the proposer is absent. Uh, would any of the other signatories like to propose Amendment 13, that being Mr. Guminsky of Belarus, Mr. Senko of Belarus, Ms. Ms. Leonenko of Belarus, or Mr. Gaghamayan of Armenia? Do any of those wish to propose Amendment 13 in the absence of the original sponsor? Going once, yes, the delegate from Armenia is recognized. Наша принципиальная позиция сводится к тому, что вокруг вокруг вопросов, касающихся событий в Украине и вокруг нее, не было всестороннего обсуждения ввиду отсутствия делегации Российской Федерации. Это подрывает суть суть основы парламентской ассамблеи ОБСЕ, когда Нет дискуссии по вопросу, а есть интерпретация случившегося и продолжающихся событий на Украине. Просьба все-таки вернуться к принципиальному решению, что все вопросы, касающиеся России, касающиеся событий на юго-востоке Украины и в Крыму, обсудить в улан -Баторе с присутствием российской делегации. Иначе мы своими этими решениями, резолюциями подрываем суть духа Хельсинки. Это уже не будет призывом и воззванием к духу Хельсинки. Поэтому, собственно, и была поставлена подпись и поддержка этой, этого, этого пункта поправки. Спасибо. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does anyone wish to speak against? Amendment number 13, Ukraine, Ukraine is recognized. Uh, 
Uh, dear colleagues, um, uh, we propose also to stay this um, point as it is, uh, because in the amendments it's not mentioned that the Minsk agreement was consisted in two parts, uh, one part signed in uh, um, 2014, uh, and another part signed it on the February 12, uh, as it mentioned it. So, as it's not a full mention of uh, the um, uh, 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 Minsk uh, agreements, uh, so we are not uh, we are against this amendment. And what is our rapporteur's opinion of the amendment? Uh, my opinion is that. Uh, the amendment should be as accepted because I must underline that the situation in Ukraine is very serious and we need a constru constructive dialogue. The dialogue is just as we have discussed earlier, the only way to move forward. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I shall now put Amendment uh, 13 to a vote. Will all in favor of Amendment 13 please raise their voting cards? And uh, cards down. All opposed would please raise their voting cards. And abstentions, abstentions, one, two. But by a vote of 18 in favor, 23 against, with five abstentions, the amendment is defeated. With regard to Amendment 14, that is invalid as insufficient signatories are in attendance at the session. With regard to Amendment 15, similarly, the, um, the proposer is not in attendance, so would any of the other signatories like to propose Amendment 15, that being Mr. Guminsky, Mr. Senko, Ms. Leonenko, Mr. Gagamayan, or Mr. Artikov of Kyrgyzstan? Yes, the, Mr. Guminsky. Mr. Guminsky of Belarus is recognized to propose Amendment Number 15. <laughs> Мы поддержали российское предложение об удалении данного пункта из текста резолюции, исходя из нашей принципиальной позиции. Белорусская делегация выступает против принятия парламентской ассамблеи ОБСЕ решений, которые не способствуют сближению позиций, снижению уровня конфронтации и урегулированию конфликта в Украине в соответствии с минскими договоренностями. К сожалению, сегодня на этой сессии мы диалога соответствующего не имеем. Спасибо. The delegate from Ukraine is recognized. Ukraine insists to retain this uh, paragraph. Why it's important? Because in this paragraph, we just uh, urge everybody for transatlantic uh, dialogue. And to keep, by keeping this uh, paragraph, uh, we want to send another message. So we are ready for dialogue. But Russia has to fulfill the Minsk obligation. Uh, last time when we met in Vienna, when Minsk uh, Plus was signed, nothing really changed. There is no ceasefire in Ukraine. Russian military, uh, military troops is coming every day to Ukraine uh, territories that occupied by Russia terrorists. Why? This is why it's important to keep, uh, to save this paragraph. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, what is the opinion of the distinguished rapporteur? Thanks, Mr. Chair. My opinion is uh, uh, that we should not accept the amendment. I think it's very important that uh, number nine uh, is uh, kept in the report. 
Uh, and as Yasta said before, it's uh, about uh, the peace and it's about the dialogue. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, I shall now put the amendment to the vote. All those in favor of Amendment 15, please raise their voting cards. Cards down and those against. It is clear, are there abstentions? Are there abstentions? Cards down, abstentions, abstentions. One, two, three, four, abstentions. Five abstentions. And the amendment is defeated. We now move to Amendment 16 by Ms. Vilia Alignite of Lithuania. Ms. Alignati, you are recognized to propose Amendment 16. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this amendment uh, um, uh, brings simply more detail into the paragraph number one, but no uh, important change. So um, I, I will not insist uh, on it. Uh, simply, I would ask uh, uh, what is the opinion of distinguished rapporteur? Uh, very well. Who wishes to speak against Amendment 16? No one. And um, the dis it seems that the distinguished rapporteur uh, gets to decide this issue. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I agree with the amendment. I think uh, the paragraph will be more clear with uh, the adoption of Amendment 16. Thanks. Do, do the members agree? All in favor? of the amendment, please raise your voting card. All in favor. And uh, those opposed? And uh, one, two, three. Abstentions, abstentions, two. And the amendment is adopted. I now call on Mr. Varamenos of Greece to propose amendment number 17. Um, does, um, does anyone wish to speak in favor of uh, amendment number 17? If not, it will be considered nonetheless. Does anyone wish to speak against number 17? Or shall we simply hear from the distinguished rapporteur? Mrs. Setterfeld, what is your opinion of the amendment? Uh, if it still was valid, I think I, I would agree. But as we have changed the paragraph nine, I can't see that it's valid anymore. Thanks, Mr. Chair. The, the rapporteur is opposed to the amendment. Is that correct? Yes. All right, let's move to a vote. Those in favor, raise your voting cards. Those opposed, raise your voting cards. And those abstaining, and the amendment is not agreed to. Now, is... Uh, Ms. Mutonen of Austria here. Um, may we propose this procedure with regard to four amendments offered by uh, the distinguished delegate from Austria, Ms. Mutonen. Uh, she has offered amendments 18, 30, 44, and 45. Is there objection to Ms. Mutonen, um, is there objection to, to our taking all of these amendments in block and allowing Ms. Mutonen, say, two minutes to discuss all four of them? Shall we proceed in that way? Without objection, the lady from, uh, from uh, Austria is recognized to speak on all four of her amendments. 
Thank you very much. Danke, Herr Vorsitzender. Meine Damen und Herren, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, diese, die Amendments beziehen sich eben alle auf dasselbe Thema. Wir können davon ausgehen, wir haben gesagt, hier in Helsinki haben vor 40 Jahren die europäischen Regierung, Regierungen ein Ende gemacht, den Denkmustern des Kalten Krieges. Und diese Erklärung von Helsinki wurde hier verabschiedet und das war der erste entscheidende Schritt hin zu einem neuen Sicherheitsverständnis in Gesamteuropa. Das heißt, aufeinander zugehen, Sicherheit und Frieden gemeinsam durch Zusammenarbeit schaffen. Und das führte auch von der nuklearen Abschreckung zur nuklearen Entspannung und Abrüstung in Europa. Und diese Politik der nuklearen Entspannung hat sich mit der Ukraine-Krise und den wachsenden Spannungen zwischen Russland und der NATO verändert und ein, ES, ein jähes Ende gefunden. In den, vergangenen, in den vergangenen Monaten wurde wiederholt mit dem Einsatz nuklearer Waffen gedroht und die nukleare Aufrüstung angekündigt. Und für die Sicherheit in Europa, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, sind das verheerende Signale. Noch immer gibt es weltweit 17.000 Atomwaffen. Der größte Teil davon liegt in den Händen von NATO und Russland. Genug, um Europa, um quasi die ganze Welt mehrfach auszulöschen. Rund 2.000 äh, Atombomben befinden sich auf der höchsten Alarmstufe und können also innerhalb kürzester Zeit äh, äh, benutzt werden und gestartet werden. Und es hat viele Beispiele gegeben, dass Missverständnisse oder auch Unfälle äh, uns an, an den Rand von solchen schrecklichen Ereignissen geführt haben. Die Rückkehr der nuklearen Abschreckung widerspricht also dem Geist und der Idee der OSZE, Sicherheit durch friedliche Kooperation zu schaffen und nicht durch das Drohen äh, mit der gegenseitigen Vernichtung. Und die Parlamentarische Versammlung der OSZD sollte daher meiner Meinung nach ein klares Zeichen an die Regierungen senden, dass wir diese Entwicklung mit großer Besorgnis sehen und daher nicht unterstützen wo wollen. Und aus diesem Grunde bringe ich die folgenden vier äh, Ergänzungen ein und bitte Sie, geschätzte Kolleginnen und Kollegen, um Ihre Unterstützung. Danke. Thank you very much. And uh, would anyone wish to speak against amendments number 18, 30, 44, or 45? Anyone wish to speak in opposition? If not, what is Ms. Ms. Sederfeld's opinion of the amendments? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am in favor of amendment 18. Uh, I think it's uh, very important to raise the issue uh, of the nuclear forces. But then when we move further on to paragraph 30, I am against it, and that's because uh, that it's just stress one country, and I think this issue is so important that we shouldn't just say that to stress one country because it should be a work together with every country. But I really appreciate the work uh, done by Austria. Uh, so I defeat the paragraph, uh, the amendment 30. And when, when we go to the Amen. Did I check the phone? Four, one? 44 and 45. Four, 44. Yes, here it is. Yes. I think uh, number 44 is, uh, should be accepted. Thanks. And number 45. 45. I, uh, I am so sorry. I think I said wrong before, didn't I? When I talked about. No, it was it's Amendment 30, you said yes. no. Yes, yes. And now 44, you said yes. Yes. 45. I am, I am sorry. Uh, number 45, I say okay to. I think it's a very excellent one, and it uh, stress the importance uh, of supporting uh, the United Nations de decision. Thanks, Mr. Chair. All right. Uh, the rapporteur 
uh, has accepted amendments 18, 44, and 45, and opposes amendment 30. Shall we vote on amendment 18? Are you ready to vote on amendment 18? Those in favor, raise your voting cards. And it is clear, cards down. Those opposed? And abstentions. And amendment, and amendment 18 is agreed. Now to amendment 30. Are you ready to vote on amendment 30? All in favor of amendment 30, please raise your voting cards. And uh, those opposed, raise your voting cards. And, and abstentions. And by a vote of 29 in favor, 16 against, and 10 abstentions, Paragraph 30 is adopted. Now, with regard to um, amend, Amendment 30 is adopted. Uh, with regard to Amendment 44, all in favor, raise your voting cards. 44. It is clear, and those opposed will raise their voting cards. Are there those who wish to oppose Amendment number 44, and are there abstentions? Abstentions to 44, and Amendment 44 is adopted. With regard to Amendment 45, we will now put Amendment 45 to a vote. Raise your voting cards if you're in favor. And it is clear that uh, that will carry. Those opposed to Amendment 45? and those who wish to abstain. Thank you. And Amendment 45 is adopted. So all, um, all four amendments were adopted and uh, the chair thanks the delegates for indulging us in that procedure. Uh, now, uh, uh, number, Amendment number 19. Ms. Alec Naite from Lithuania is recognized to propose her Amendment 19. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, this amendment calls on all parties to fully implement the package of measures for the implementation of the Minsk agreements. And uh, my idea was uh, to, uh, that it should be explicitly mentioned. Uh, all these measures uh, which w were agreed um, in, uh, under the format Normandy. So I would ask, uh, in this case, uh, Madam Rapporteur uh, to agree with the amendment. Somebody wants to speak against of this amendment, please. Any objection? No. What about the opinion of uh, Madam Rapporteur, please? Thanks, Mr. Chair. I agree with the amendment. So, will those in favor, amendment number 19, please raise your voting cards. Thank you. Will those against this amendment please raise your voting cards? No one. Amendment number 19 is any abstentions, please? No abstention? One abstention. Thank you. Amendment number 19 is adopted.
Amendment 20, in the absence of the proposal to this amendment, would any of the other signatories like to propose Amendment 20? Mr. Guminski from Belarus, Mr. Senka Belarus, Lenenko Belarus, Mr. Gagamian from Armenia. Anyone wishes to propose this amendment? No one. Not in, uh, does anybody want to speak? Ah, Mr. Gumiski, please. Уважаемый председатель, я хотел бы я хотел бы обратить внимание, что количество голосов пять здесь не соответствует, потому что остается четыре голоса. То есть по нашему регламенту мы не можем ее рассматривать принципиально. В принципе, остается четыре голоса только. Поэтому я не знаю, уже это не первый такой э, подход, не первый такой. Поэтому я просил бы в этом уточниться. Спасибо. Yeah. So this is why we have to consider this Amendment 20. Anyone wish to speak against this amendment? Please, Ukraine. Dear colleagues, we just uh, uh, adopted the Amendment number 19 uh, regarding the paragraph 10. So uh, there is no need to pass um, this amendment. So we propose to uh, return to um, Amendment 19, uh, which amend paragraph 10. Thank you. Thank you. What about the opinion of Madame Rapporteur? Thanks, Mr. Chair. I am of the same opinion like the Ukrainian delegation. We have uh, adopted uh, Amendment 19 and I think that's a very important one because it's uh, talk about the implementation of the Minsk agreement uh, in a way that uh, I am in favor of and therefore I, I suggest to delete amendment number 20. Thanks. Thank you, Madam Rapporteur. Uh, so with all those in favor of this amendment number 20, please raise your voting cards. Thank you. Those against? It is clear. What about the abstentions? Any abstention? So, the amendment number 20 is defeated. Amendment number 21, I call Ms. Ali Kinete Abremekina to propose her amendment, please. Madam Abremekina, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, uh, this is a suggestion uh, after paragraph 10 to insert the following new paragraph, which welcomes the deployment of the special monitoring mission to Ukraine. I think it's important uh, uh, to be mentioned. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak against this amendment? No one? What about the opinion of the rapporteur? Thanks, Mr. Chair. I agree. Thank you. With all those, again, with all those in favor of Amendment 21, please raise your voting cards. Thank you. Against? No one. Abstention? One. Thank you very much. The amendment number 21 is adopted. Again, I call uh, Madame Arikinete Abremekina from Lithuania to propose her amendment 22. Uh, this is amendment uh, for the paragraph 11. Uh, according to its mandate uh, adopted in permanent council by all participating states, SMMs uh, should have safe and secure access throughout Ukraine uh, to fulfill its mandate. Uh, and uh, I wanted to underline it by uh, proposing this amendment. 
Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak against this amendment? No one. What about the opinion of Madame Rapporteur, please? Agree, Mr. Chair. Thank you. With all those in favor of Amendment 22, please raise your voting cards. Clear? What about against? No. One, two. Abstention? Two abstentions. Four abstentions. So Amendment number 22 is adopted too. Amendment 23, I again call Ms. Abrebekina from Lithuania to propose her Amendment 23. Please. Uh, I suggest after the paragraph 11, which has been adopted already, insert the following new paragraph about welcoming the renewed partnership be between the project coordinator in Ukraine and the Ukrainian authorities on implementing uh, an ambitious reform agenda. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak against this amendment? No one? What about the opinion of the Rapporteur? Madam Rapporteur, please. Agree, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Will all those in favor of Amendment 23 please raise your voting cards? Thank you. Who are against? One. Abstentions? Two, three abstentions. Thank you. Amendment number 23 is adopted. Amendment 24 is the absence, in the absence of the proposal of this amendment, would any of the other signatures like to propose Amendment 24? Mr. Kuminski from Belarus, Mr. Senka again from Belarus, Lenenko, Gegamian. Okay, please, Mr. Gegamian, you have the floor. Уважаемые коллеги, чтобы не сложилось впечатление, что все поправки, авторство которых принадлежит членам российской делегации, отвергаются. Я хотел, чтобы хотя бы на этой поправке мы сосредоточили внимание на ее исключительную взвешенность. Весь подтекст этой поправки сводится к реализации Минских соглашений. А Минские соглашения, помимо России, Франции, Федеративной Республики Германии, подписала и Украина. Так вот, суть этой поправки, чтобы несли бы равную ответственность за все, что сегодня творится на юго-востоке Украины. Спасибо. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak against Amendment 24, please, Ukraine? If we are talking about responsibility, so Russia who started the illegal and criminal annexation of Crimea, then uh, the war in the east of Ukraine. So actually Russia has to take responsibility for all victims, for more than 7,000 people that were killed by separatists and terrorists. So we propose to retain the paragraph as it is without this amendment proposed by Russia, Belarus, Kyrgyzstan, Armenia and other colleagues. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. What about the opinion of Ms. Kederfeld, please, Madam Rapporteur. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am against uh, the Amendment 24, and uh, I am in favor of the paragraph 12, and that's because it stress uh, the influence of the illegal separatists, uh, and I think it's very important to keep the paragraph as it is. Uh, and I also would like to say, yeah, just to make clear, that I actually spoke in favor of the amendment uh, number 13, uh, just because it was said that uh, I was against all amendments uh, by the Russian Federation. Thanks. Thank you. 
Now I shall put Amendment 24 to the void. Will all those in favor of this amendment please raise your voting cards? Who are in favor? Thank you. Who are against? In abstentions? Thank you. So, amendment number 24 is defeated. Amendment 25, I call Mr. Japariza from Georgia to propose his amendment 25. Please, Mr. Japariza, you have the floor. Thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we propose after paragraph 13, which Georgian delegation naturally fully supports, to insert new paragraph, uh, which would be just underlying the need to strengthen the OSCE's engagement in the process of peaceful resolution of the conflict in Georgia, particularly in the Geneva international discussions. And I have an argument to, to ask you know, humbly all of you to support this because we perceive developments in Ukraine in a broader context and I think that where we all, including international community in general, be more active in 2008, developments in Ukraine could have been different. So I would urge you and ask you to support new paragraph. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak against this amendment, 25? No one. What about the opinion of Madame Rapporteur? Please. Agree. <coughs> Agree, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Now I shall put Amendment 25 to the void. Will all those in favor of Amendment 25 please raise your voting cards? So it is clear. Who are against? Against? No. Any abstention? One abstention. Thank you. Amendment 25 is adopted. Amendment 26. I call Mr. White from Canada to propose his Amendment 26. Please. Thank you, uh, colleagues. In the last year, terrorist attacks by radicalized individuals have challenged common OSCE values across our area and in partner countries. My amendment to paragraph 14 would add a reference to last year's ISIL-inspired terrorist attacks in Canada, including an attack on Canada's parliament directly targeted democracy, a core value of the OSCE as a whole and of our assembly in particular. On October 22, 2014, a young Canadian man radicalized over the internet attacked Canada's parliament in Ottawa after first killing a soldier standing guard at our National War Memorial. Two days prior, Another radicalized man deliberately ran over and killed another soldier in a town near Montreal where a large military base is located. I ask for your support in condemning these terrorist attacks in Canada alongside those in Paris and Copenhagen. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak against this amendment 26? Uh, Mr. 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 Boynes. Uh, Mr. President, thank you very much. I claim to speak against it really on a technicality and in the hope, although not wishing to make life difficult for you, Mr. President, this really ought to be amended to include a reference to Tunisia and Seuss. As that is a matter entirely, of course, for the uh, committee, uh, the proposer of the uh, amendment and indeed the uh, rapporteur. Thank Otherwise, you. I would support it. Thank you very much, Mr. Boynes. I'd like to ask uh, Madame Rapporteur's opinion. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I agree with the amendment, and uh, I do also agree with uh, Lord Bones' uh, uh, suggestion. Thanks, Mr. Chair.
So I shall put Amendment 26 to the void. Will all those in favor of Amendment 26 please raise your voting cards? Thank you. With all those against this Amendment 26, please raise your voting cards. No one. What about abstentions? One abstention. So, you, you will. Yeah. I will kind of ask to the drafting committee to include the the, the proposal of Mr. Boynes uh, to the uh, amendment that we adopted now. So I call, uh, I declare the amendment 26 is adopted. Amendment 27, I call Mr. Varamones from the Greece to propose his amendment 27. Please, sir, you have the floor. He is not here in case of his absence if anyone wishes to speak on his behalf. No one? Anybody against this amendment? No. What about the opinion of Mrs. Rapporteur? I am in favor of the amendment. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Now I shall put amendment 27 to the vote. Will all those in favor of that amendment please raise your voting cards? The voting is clear. What about against? Will all those against please raise your voting cards? No one? Any abstention? Four. Four abstention. Now, Amendment 27 is adopted. Now I move to Amendment 28. In the absence of the proposal to this amendment, would anyone of other signatures like to propose Amendment 26? Mr. Gumidinsky, Mr. Senko, Lenenko, Mr. Gagamian, Mr. Gagamian from Armenia, please. Mr. Gagamian, you have the floor. Эта поправка преследует одну единственную цель, чтобы выразить нашу с вами солидарность с журналистами, которые зачастую рискуя своей жизнью стараются преподнести мировому сообществу ту картину, которая на самом деле сегодня есть на Украине. И, видимо, авторы поправки, в том числе и соавторы, поддержали ее по той простой причине, потому что мы с вами являлись свидетелем трагической гибели российских журналистов, журналистов из других стран. Прошу поддержать эту поправку. Who wishes to speak in opposition to Amendment 28? Does anyone wish to speak against the amendment? Madam Rapporteur, what is your opinion of the amendment? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am against the amendment and in favor of the paragraph 14, because the paragraph 14, it's uh, actually really express and make clear about the values of tolerance, freedom, and expression of expression. And therefore, I would like, uh, I suggest uh, that the paragraph 14 is as written. Thanks. I shall now put amendment 28 to the vote. Will all those vote in favor of, all those in favor of the amendment please raise their voting cards. Please raise your voting cards if you're in favor. And those opposed to the amendment, please raise your voting cards.
And those who wish to abstain? Yes. Yes, Ten, two, three, four. And uh, with the 10 in favor and 29 against, four abstentions, the amendment is not adopted. With regard to Amendment 29, Mr. Gagamayan of Armenia is recognized to propose his amendment. Прежде чем представить поправку, я хочу выразить слова глубокой благодарности Пантифику Франциску Первому за то, что 12 апреля текущего года во время литургии в соборе Святого Петра он осудил геноцид армян в Османской империи. Я хочу выразить благодарность германской делегации за выступление президента Германии Йоахима Гаука в Берлинском кафедральном соборе, который также осудил геноцид армян в Османской империи. Хочу выразить особую благодарность президенту Франции Франсуа Оланду, президенту России Владимиру Путину, президенту Сербии Томиславу Николичу, которые своим личным присутствием были на мемориальных мероприятиях в годовщину столетия геноцида армян. Эта поправка внесена, конечно же, премьер-министру Бельгии Шарлю Мишелю, который также осудил геноцид, ну и Сенату Бразилии, который единогласно 27 мая осудил геноцид армян в Османской империи. Поправка преследует одну единственную цель, чтобы предотвратить мир от грядущей угрозы геноцида, в какой бы точке земного шара он ни произошел. Потому что Геноцид в любой части света – это геноцид всех нас. Нет человека, который был как остров один, все мы едины, как сказал великий английский поэт Джон Дон. Спасибо. Thank you, sir. And are there those who wish to speak against Amendment 29? Turkey. Yes, the delegate from Turkey. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Turkey sweeps on the tragic events that took place in 1915 are well known. They have been voiced on a number of occasions. We want the truth to be our guide. Our archives are open. Our proposal for a joint historical commission to go through all the documents in all relevant archives remain valid. We must keep in mind that genocide is a very narrowly defined legal term that needs to be proven before and established by a competent court. Regretfully, the Armenian delegation nevertheless chose to once again level their customary basis accusations against my country that go beyond the scope of the topic we are discussing here today. Therefore, we are against this amendment. Thank you. Thank you very much. And what is Ms. Sederfeld's opinion of the amendment? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am against the amendment number 29, not because I am in favor of genocide. It's because I find genocide a very serious crime, and I think also that genocide, we should be careful, we should also, if this amendment should be adopted, I think it would be very, very uh, important that it shouldn't just mention one minorities. I think here it's stressed, the particular, the Christians, for me, it's important that it uh, shouldn't be against any, as well, ethnic or religion minorities. And therefore, I am speaking in favor of the paragraph 15, because I think that's more wider and keep, uh, include the values of the OSCE. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank uh, well, we already, it's not about taking off the paragraph 15, I mean there shouldn't be anything after it because that takes something away of the values from the OSCE from the paragraph 15. Thanks, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you, Madam Rapporteur. Uh, we will now put Amendment 29 to the vote. Those in favor, please raise your voting cards. Cards down, and those opposed to the amendment, raise your voting cards. Eight. And those abstaining. All right, by a vote of uh, 13 in favor, 23 against, with 16 abstentions, the amendment is not agreed to. Uh, amendment 30 has already been considered. Amendment 31 is invalid as insufficient signatories in attendance uh, are, are in attendance. So we now move to Amendment 32. And I call on Ms. Kohler from Sweden to propose her Amendment 32. Ms. Kohler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, can I ask for, uh, I would like to speak for Amendment 32 and 66, because I think they are in the same uh, group. Is it OK? Is there objection to the delegate speaking on behalf of uh, 32 and 66. Proceed then, madam. Proceed. Thank you. Today is a good day. Actually, it's a perfect day, I think, for us to take a step forward concerning uh, equality between men and women. Um, the past 40 years, uh, it has happened a very much uh, good things to, to reach um, equality in many matters, but still we have a long way to go before we have uh, a globe that we can call equal. And therefore, I really hope that my uh, suggestion will be uh, all our decision in those two uh, amendments. Thank you. The amendments before us are Amendment 32 and 66. Does anyone wish to speak against either of these or both of these amendments? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Madam Rapporteur, what is your opinion of the amendments? Agree, Mr. Chair. The uh, rapporteur uh, accepts the amendments. Are you, um, let's proceed then uh, to Amendment 32. All in favor of Amendment 32, raise your voting card. It's very clear. Cards down. Those opposed, and there are none. Abstentions? Yes. Yes. And the amendment is adopted. With regard to Amendment 66, are you ready to vote? Are you ready to vote? All in favor of Amendment 66, raise your voting cards. Those in favor of Amendment 66. And cards down. Those opposed. Those opposed. The chair sees no opposite. And, um, and abstentions. Their abstentions. And the amendment number 66 is adopted. The chair now calls on Mr. Gagamayan of uh, Armenia to propose amendment 33. colleagues, в проекте резолюции первого комитета упоминаются буквально девять принципов Хельсингского заключительного акта. И это бесспорно достоинство этого документа. 
К сожалению, с завидным упорством не принимается, восьмая, не принимается восьмой принцип. Принцип один из основополагающих. В силу этого мы просим обязательно включить равноправие и самоопределение народов. Не будь восьмого принципа Хельсингского заключительного акта, в этом зале сейчас сидели бы представители из 35 стран. Я понимаю, в силу геополитической конъюнктуры поправка четвертая аналогичного содержания в другом контексте была не принята. Но давайте хоть в одном месте мы упомянем восьмой принцип Хельсингского заключительного акта. Это безотносительно конкретной ситуации в каком-либо регионе ОБСЕ. Просто принцип тут важен. Не принимаем мы этот принцип восьмой, тогда прямо об этом заявим, а не будем умалчивать и под какими-то предлогами все время обходить этот принцип. Спасибо. Dear colleagues, uh, we propose uh, to retain this amendment, uh, this point as it is, because uh, um, according to the Helsinki principle and according to a any other international acts uh, and charter of national uh, um, nation, the equal rights and self-determination of people should be within international recognized borders. Uh, so we are against this amendment. What is Ms. Sederfeld's opinion of the amendment? Thanks, Mr. Chair. I am against the amendment and I am in favor of the paragraph. And it's just because I think it's important to be very clear when we talk about the Helsinki Final Act and keep uh, the independence of any state because that's the body we are talking about. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Rapporteur. I shall now put Amendment 33 to the vote. Will those in favor of Amendment 33 please raise your voting cards? Those in favor. All right, cards down. And those opposed to Amendment number 33, raise your voting cards. And uh, 41, those uh, wishing to abstain, abstentions, thank you. And the amendment is not adopted. Amendment 34 has become invalid as insufficient signatories are in attendance at the session. I now call on Mr. Kafkalias of Cyprus to propose amendment number 35. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. By the proposed amendment, we wish to stress the high significance for the OSCE to uphold its relevance and credibility by further promoting inclusiveness against increasing bipolarization and Cold War tactics, which threaten overall security and key their efforts to address global trends. It is therefore essential that arms control, security, and confidence building related efforts be inclusive and reflect participate states' will to overcome divergent security perceptions and to achieve the necessary trust and uh, consent. Ensuring participate states' string compliance with international law beyond narrow expenditures constitutes the only common denominator towards the settlement of old and new conflicts and the main challenge for the OSCE in its efforts toward a security community. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone wish to speak against Amendment 35? Anyone at all against? Madam Rapporteur, what is your opinion of the amendment? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, I do also want to say thank you for the clarification <coughs> from the uh, speaker of the uh, um, the writer of the Amendment 35, because when I read the paragraph, I found it not so clear and uh, stringent. So I couldn't really see what it contribute and uh, not contribute to the resolution. Uh,
So I would like to give the floor to the committee to decide, but I am, in, by myself, I'm against the, um, uh, the amendment with the opinion I have just mentioned. Thanks. Mr. Thank Chair. you, Madam Rapporteur. And uh, with that, are we ready to vote? on amendment number 35. Those in favor, raise your voting cards. Thank you, and cards down. Those opposed, raise your voting cards. Anyone opposed, yes. All right. Does anyone wish to vote at all? Okay. And abstentions? Okay. Uh, um, Mr. Chairperson. Let's, uh, let's vote again. Yeah. Um, uh, on, only uh, um, uh, 24 people voted in the whole committee, and perhaps that they would, that's the way it would like to be. But let's vote again. All in favor? of amendment, yes, the gentleman from Sweden. Yes, I think uh, we all arrived at a very confusing point in here. That's why there was a few voting. I think it was totally less than maybe 10 vo people voting. Right. And, and uh, uh, Madame Rapporteur was saying that she wants to leave it for the committee and, and it was quite confusing to us what does that mean. Um, so I think it needs to be a little bit clarified what, I mean, what Let's, the situation is. <laughs> shall we ask once again the rapporteur to clarify her opinion? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, I will, of course, uh, clarify my, thanks. Uh, as I said, when I re read the, par the amendment, I found it very confusing. I didn't find a string the stringents in it. And that's why I am not in favor of the paragraph. Uh, but as I said, uh, the person who spoke in favor of it did it very well. But I am against the paragraph, and it's because the way it's written. Thanks you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, um, Ms. Uh, Sederfeld. For that, and let's vote again. Then, uh, are you ready to vote in favor uh, on the issue of Amendment Number 35 by Mr. Kafkalias of Cyprus? Those in favor, raise your cards. Okay. Those opposed, now raise your cards. Those opposed. And abstentions, and there were plenty, whether you admit it or not. Okay, by a vote of eight in favor, 18 against, and 12 abstentions, the amendment is not adopted. Amendment 36 has become invalid as insufficient signatories are in attendance at the session. Likewise, for amendments 37 and 38, they are invalid as insufficient signatories are in attendance at the session for either of them. So we will now move to Amendment 39. In the absence of the proposer to Amendment 39, would any of the other signatories like to propose Amendment Number 39? Those signatories being Mr. Guminski of Belarus, Mr. Sen Mr. Senko of Belarus, Ms. Leonenko of Belarus, or Mr. Gagamayan of Armenia. Would any of those four like to propose Amendment 39? Going once, and, and in the absence of a proposer, the amendment will Ukraine. not. Does, does Ukraine wish to propose the amendment? Okay. Um, all right, then the amendment will not be considered, and we will Speak move. Against. Oh, yes, does anyone wish to speak against Amendment 
39. Perhaps now Ukraine would like to be recognized, or perhaps not. Yes. Ukraine is recognized to speak against Amendment 39. Um, dear um, colleagues, we would like to retain this paragraph as it is. Thank you. Madam Rapporteur, what is your opinion of Amendment Number 39? Thanks, Mr. Chair. I am against Amendment Number 39, uh, and I am in favor of Paragraph 23, uh, and that's because Arms Trade Treaty (ATT) is a very important treaty, and it thus there is the need to call for universal participation. Otherwise, the value of the treaty will be less. In favor, uh, against the amendment. Thank you. The rapporteur is uh, against the amendment. Are you ready to vote? All in favor of the amendment, raise your voting cards. All in favor, raise your cards. And those opposed, raise your voting cards. And the issue is clear. Cards down. Those wishing to abstain. And the amendment is not agreed to. Amendment 40 is, has become invalid, as insufficient signatories are in attendance at the session. Uh, likewise, for Amendment 41 and 42, they are both Um, in, uh, invalid as insufficient signatories are in attendance. And uh, with regard to amendment number 43, in the absence of the proposer to this amendment, would any of the other signatories like to propose amendment number 43? That being Mr. Gominski of Belarus, Mr. Senko of Belarus, Ms. Leonenko of Belarus, or Mr. Gagamayan of Armenia. Would any, yes, Mr. Gagamayan of Armenia is recognized to speak in favor uh, and to propose amendment number 43. Принять необходимые усилия для подготовки нового соглашения по контролю над обычными вооружениями в Европе на замену ДОВСЭ, включая запуск соответствующих переговоров. То есть ДОВСЭ, если сейчас не действует, и Российская Федерация со своими коллегами вносит такую поправку, я думаю, надо приветствовать это предложение России, если мы не хотим окончательно подорвать суть, смысл договора до все. Спасибо. Thank you. Who wishes to speak against amendment number 43? Would anyone like to be recognized to speak against Ukraine? We insist on retaining the paragraph um, as it is because first we have to, uh, instead of uh, elaborate a new agreement, we have to execute the existing one. Thank you. What is Ms. Sederfeld's opinion of the amendment? Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. I am against the amendment and in favor of the paragraph. That's because, uh, just as I said, there is an existing treaty and I think it's important that uh, the countries stick to the treaty so we can have it accepted. Thanks. I will now put Amendment 43 to the vote. Those in favor of Amendment 43, please raise their voting cards. All right, cards down. Those opposed, please raise your voting cards. And uh, the margin is clear. Abstentions? Abstentions? Number of abstentions, seven abstentions, and the amendment is not adopted. Um, amendment 44 has already been um, dealt with, as was Amendment 45. So the chair now calls on Ms. Alec Naite of Lithuania to propose Amendment 46.
excuse me. <laughs> I haven't heard your proposal. Uh, Amendment 46. Uh, uh, I think it's, there is a need to stress the important role of the OECE institutions in uh, assisting uh, uh, states in the implementation of the OECE commitments. Uh, this is why I uh, propose to amend paragraph 26. And uh, does anyone wish to speak in opposition to adequate funding for our field operations? Mrs. Setterfeld, what is your opinion of the amendment? I agree, Mr. Chair. The uh, rapporteur agrees. Shall we now vote? Those in favor, raise your voting cards. Very clear. Yeah. Very clear. Those opposed? Those opposed and abstentions. And the amendment number 46 is adopted. I'm told that we must adjourn in uh, eight minutes. We've been moving along uh, very swiftly, and I thank the delegates. Is Ms. Glansman from Switzerland present to propose her amendment number 47? Ms. Glansman, you are recognized. Yeah, Herr Vorsitzender. Wir bringen diese Änderung ein, weil der Text in der Originalfassung einseitig den Separatistengruppen die Verantwortung für die Gewalt zugesteht. Die vorgeschlagene Änderung unterstreicht die illegale Natur der bewaffneten Gruppen, steht aber auch der ukrainischen Regierung gewisse Verantwortung zur Beendigung des bewaffneten Konflikts zu. Ich danke, wenn Sie diese Änderung unterstützen. Anyone opposed? Would someone like to speak in opposition to the amendment? Yes, Ukraine. You are recognized. To be briefly, we propose to retain the paragraph as it is without the amendment proposed by our colleagues from Switzerland, Liechtenstein. The explanation is very clear why, because um, uh, <laughs> key is for us now to remove from Ukraine illegal um, armed group financed by um, foreign state. And the situation in Ukraine exactly, this is the Putin, Mr. Putin and his oligarchs. Thank you. And uh, what is the opinion of Ms. Satterfeld? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am against the amendment and in favor of the paragraph, just to make it, because I think the paragraph is much more clear and it's also called for immediately act. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Rapporteur. Are we ready to vote on Amendment 47? Those in favor, raise your voting cards. Those in favor, raise your cards. And those opposed, please raise your voting cards. Abstentions? <coughs> Thank you. And the amendment is defeated. I now call on Ms. Vilia Alagnaite of Lithuania to propose her Amendment 48. Uh, dear colleagues, I think it's important to stress the role of the entire OEC and its institutions and not to limit to the chair in office. This is why I've made this proposal. Those wishing to speak against the amendment. Madam Rapporteur, what is your opinion of the amendment? I agree, Mr. Chair. Are you ready to vote on Amendment 48? All in favor, raise your voting cards. And the margin is clear. Those opposed? Those opposed, please raise your voting cards. Yes, thank you. And abstentions? Thank you. Yes, and the amendment is adopted. 
We move now to Amendment 49, and I call Mr. Mariani of France to propose Amendment 49. Mr. Mariani. Would anyone else wish to speak in favor of Amendment number 49? Who would speak in opposition to Amendment 49? Ukraine is recognized. Um, please uh, retain the original version of the paragraph as it is. Thank you. And Madam Rapporteur. Uh, I am against the amendment and uh, I think that the new paragraph is uh, adopted and therefore I can't see that there is a need for the amendment 49. I am against it. Thanks, Mr. Chair. The rapporteur is against the amendment. I shall now put amendment 49 to the vote. Those in favor of Amendment 49, raise your voting cards. All right, cards down. Those opposed, raise your voting cards. Very clear, very clear. And uh, those who wish to abstain, thank you. Thank you, and the Amendment 49 is, um, is not agreed to. I think um, Amendment 50 will be the last amendment we will consider at this morning's session since we need to clear the room at the bottom of the hour. So the chair calls on Ms. Vilia Alignite from Lithuania to propose Amendment number 50. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the OEC mandate stipulates that SMMs should have free access throughout all Ukraine. And uh, this is the essence of my amendment. Those who wishing to speak against, anyone opposed? And Madam Rapporteur. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I am against the amendment and in favor of the paragraph. That's because the end of the paragraph that, that's actually stress the need of the delivery and storage and humanitarian aid, aid and the paragraph does actually stress uh, the need to access to all Ukraine. Thanks. Um, are you um, ready to vote? And the the amendment before us is amendment number 50. Those in favor, raise your voting cards. Those opposed? Those opposed? And the clear margin of who would like to abstain? Are there abstentions? Thank you, thank you. And the amendment is adopted. Now, um, if the members will bear with me for one moment. Uh, thank you. We've, I think we've made uh, substantial progress, and I, I want to commend the members of the committee for uh, their courtesy and for uh, adhering to, uh, to the, the time limits and, and for the decorum of the, of the debate. We will uh, continue consideration of amendments to the draft resolution supplementary items at our next meeting at 2.30 p.m. this afternoon. And uh, my colleagues, when you see our staff in the hallway, uh, please uh, pat them on the back and thank them very much for uh, assisting Mr. Guliev and me in, in such uh, an excellent way. And until 2.30,
we stand in recess. Thank you.